that with you. I'm fine on here. Now let's put every tool that I need underneath their little button. So here we go. Can y'all see that? <coughs> Zion and Gabriella, can you see it? Yes. So, oh, there's my second. <coughs> so you can choose how big of a mat you want, and it just means how many numbers it has. So I'm going to choose 50. So on this, here's the directions. Roll the cubes and add. So I'm going to roll both my cubes. And I'm going to add them. Three and five. Well, how many is that, Gabriella? Three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. You got it. It's eight. So then the next thing says, use the connecting cubes to build that number on the mat. So I'm going to take my cubes right here. And I'm going to put eight. One, two. And you got to make them touch. Like they're connecting. Three, four, five. <laughs> six, seven, and eight. I wish I could make this. Whoops, that one didn't go. So you could roll it now, but I, can, I don't know how to release the controls like that to you. So then you would roll. Whoops, I forgot a part. It says scroll down to record the total number of cubes with an equation. So what I found was when our numbers get too high, you can't do that. But we could do it now. So we started with three, and we added how many, Gabriella? Eight. Three and how many more? Five. Mm -hmm. To make eight. So three plus five, whoops, I didn't get equals. Equals eight. So now we have eight. So now Zion, look, we're gonna roll again. And we have four and four, that's easy. What's four and four, Zion? Eight. It's eight. You both got sums of eight. So then we're gonna add eight more cubes. So you just, you have to keep up. One, two, whoops, didn't go. You gotta make sure they go on. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But here's the next thing. Now you have to put how many cubes we have all together. So look. The last number of cubes we had was eight. And then we added eight more, right? I'm gonna hit mute for a second. And then we had eight more. Whoops. I can't see my buttons. Well, let me do it. There we go. Eight plus eight. And then we will put equals. Who knows? Raise your hand if you know what eight plus eight is. You know, Zion? What's eight plus eight, Zion? 16. It, did you ask your mama? Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. pick. And then you would put in 16. But look, when I get here, it won't let me put in the 16. So what I did, I cheated earlier when I was playing this to show it to you. I went up to the toolbar and I got a pencil. And you can pick whatever color you want. And instead of writing it down there, because it won't let me use the pencil down there, I just put my pencil right here and I put eight plus eight equals 16. Now you can't write too big or you won't have enough room for all your equations. And then down here, I'm just gonna go back. I'm gonna put it because it's not gonna let me write there. I don't know why they won't give you enough space, but they won't. So then we would go back. We wanna keep going until we fill up this whole mat right here. We'd roll our cubes again. And we have three and six. So Gabriella, this is your turn. Oh. 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 It's nine. So this time we're going to add nine more. Count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, but now look at our 
mat right here. This thing's called the mat. How many cubes does it have now? I'll give you a hint. Each one of these rows has 10. So we have two tens and how many more? Raise your hand if you know how many that is. Two tens and how many more? Oh, Gabriella knows. Gabriella, how many is it? 15. There's two tens and how many more here? Five. Yeah, so what's two tens and five more? Okay. Ten. Yeah, so we've got 25. Hey, St. Kendra. Hi. So, once again, it tells you to go down here and write your equation. <laughs> but we can't. So I'm going to put my 25, but I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to write my next equation. And I'm going to choose a different color. So we started with 16. Then we rolled six and three. The Gabriella said was nine. And that made how many all together? 25. It made 25. Good job. Okay, then we would keep going. We're going to roll the dice again. I'll slide it back down. Whoop, we already had that one. So, Kendra, can you see that? Maybe she left. Zion, how many is three and six more? Six and three. Nine. It's nine. Gabriella just had that same equation. So we're <laughs> going to add nine more. Ready? Zion, count with me. One. Two. Good job. Three. Four. Five. five six. Seven. Eight. Nine. We're almost filling up this whole. I know you're right, and that's the goal. So now, Zion, how many do we have on our mat all together? Look at the tens. Count the tens. One group of tens, two tens, three tens, and how many more? Four. There's three tens and four more. So how many is that? Thirty-four. You got it. Way to go. So I'm going to come down here on the chart. I'm going to write 34. You just use your key um, pad and type it in. And I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to write my next equation. I'm going to choose purple this time. So last time we started with 25. If I can look at my last number that I had right here, I had 25. I added how many more? Six and three was how many? Count on six, then count on three more. Seven. Nine. It's nine. So we said 25 plus nine equals, and if I forget, I can look back, roll back down here, and it was 34. Or you can look at your tens and ones. 25 plus nine is 34. We're getting some pretty big numbers. So we would go back to the top roll again. Oh, that one's too easy. I'm going to unmute you both. Ready? What is five plus five? Ten. Yeah, so we're going to add ten this time. Ready, girls? Help me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
So I'm going to go down here, 34 and 10 more makes 44. And then I can come back. I'm going to write my equation since it won't let me type them in at the bottom. Isn't that silly that they told us to do that, but it won't let us do it? Mm -hmm. So we had 34. And how many did we add to it? Five plus five was? Five. Ten. Ten. 34 plus 10 equals 44. Okay, so here comes my tricky question. How many people do I need to fill up my mask? So, yeah. It's the it's a 50 mat, so it can fit 50. Raise your hand, see the 50 right here? If you can tell me how many more cubes we need. From 44 to 50, you got your hand up, Sakendra? How many, whoops, it didn't work. I can't unmute you. See if you can unmute you, Sakendra. Muted me. Are you there? Yes. Okay, it, it worked. All right, maybe we are both touching it. Yes. How many more do we need, Sakendra, to get to 50? We have 44, how many more? Seven. Let's see. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, and six. Oh, we needed six more. So I cheated. So I got to take those back off. One, two, three, four, five. Six. I'm going to take them off the mat because we still have to roll. I just did it to check your answer. So let's see. We got a five. Ooh, and a five. Is that enough to fill up our mat? Five and five makes? Ten. Ten. So that's more than enough. So you don't have to get an exact to fill it in. So if you put up your six, two, three, four, whoops, five, six, now we made our 50. And I would not count the 10. When you add, write your final equation, I would say what we used to get to 50. So we started at 40, uh-oh, we started at 44. Why is it, I must be down too low. Let's see if I can make it small up here. 44, and so Kendra said we needed to add how many more? Seven. You said seven, but really it was? Six. Six. And that equals how many all together? Gabriella or Zion, do you know? How many does our mat hold? Look at the mat. Zion, let me unmute you, how many? Whoops, sorry, tell me again. 50. It's 50. So now we found out that even when we're doing our writing, if I go too low, it won't let me write even lower than that. So this is kind of tricky. That's why I wanted to share it with you all. But it wouldn't let me type in the answers. I was like, what's wrong with this? So maybe it will for you guys, but it would not work it for me. Everybody know how to play that game? It's fun and you can play it like, Gabriella, you can play it with Christian. Or Zion, you could play it with CJ and you could see who gets to fill up um, the map. So who gets the last turn to fill it in? You're both going to be winners, but it's just fun to see who gets to be the last one to fill it in. So Kendra, you could play it with your sister or brother too. So there's one more thing I want to um, show with you, but I'm going to have to move this. 
I want to show you a couple books because I thought that we would start writing some nonfiction texts. Y'all remember before school went out how you were writing stories that were uh, had true facts in them? Everybody yeah. remember that? Give me thumbs up if you remember. You remember writing stories that had true facts? They had, um, Gabriella, you wrote about horses, Zion, I'm trying to think what you wrote about. It seems so long ago. Do you remember? What did you write about, Zion? Thanks. About what? I don't remember my pink book. Your what? My pink book. Oh, yes, 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 with the little baby piglets. I do, I do. So, Kendra, what was your book about? Tell us about pink books. It was what? You remember, so Kendra? Flamingos? Flam you did write one about flamingos. Yeah. So, I just picked parrots because I think they're pretty. So I thought we would read a couple of these books or maybe one today and another one another day. And I want y'all to pay close attention to the parts of the book because nonfiction books we've already learned have some special parts to them that fiction books don't have. And I want you to pay close attention to what you learn about parrots because we're gonna take some of this information and then make our own book, okay? so. Hmm, let's choose the one in the middle. And I gotta slide my thing out of the way. And I'm gonna go, maybe I can't. I was gonna say I'm gonna go back a page, but I don't see that I, it's giving me that choice. Yes, I can. Your pictures are in the way. There's the title page, there's the cover of the book. It's called Animal Safari Parrots by Chris Bowman. And then I'm gonna go to the next page. I'm trying to move your pictures somewhere that they're not in my way. It's not, there we go, it's not cooperating. It says, what are parrots? Parrots are colorful birds. They have curved beaks and strong legs. Do y'all see this word beaks right here? What do you notice, raise your hand, what do you notice about that word beaks right there? Ooh, Zion, what do you notice about beaks? It's bold. It is bold, so that means it's an important word, right? So we're gonna see that word later on. What is a parrot's beak? Raise your hand, what's a parrot's beak? All right, Zion, I see yours again. Beak is a, um, a little thing on a parrot's nose. Yeah. A beak is a parrot's nose. And their nose and what else? It can open up. It's their nose. And, it's their nose and their mouth. Thanks, Kendra. I saw you raise your hand. Were you going to say mouth also? Mm -hmm. You yes. were? All right. Let's see what's next about parrots. I don't know why it's not giving me the page turner. There we go. Parrots have four toes on each foot. Look at their toes. Two point forward and two toes point backwards. Do we only have four toes on our feet? How many toes do we have on our feet, Sakendra? Five. We have five toes on our feet, but they only have four. So two toes go forward, two toes go backwards. Now we're gonna remember some of these facts. Whoops, I turned two pages. The toes curl around branches. Their sharp nails help parrots climb. Look at those nails they have, their claws. Most parrots live in warm areas. Many sit in the canopy of the rainforest. There's Zion's words again, look. 
canopy and rainforest both are what kind of font? What do we call that? Raise your hand. Do you remember what that's called, Gabriella? Do you remember what that's called, Gabriella, when the words are big and dark like that? Yes. What's it called? <laughs> they are bold, right? All right. Let's go on. Parrots eat fruits, flowers, and small insects. Their favorite food is seeds. There it is again. And look at these little pictures underneath. They show what the parrots like to eat. Instead of telling us in words, if that was in words, it would be called captions, but these are little pictures. Parrots use their strong beaks to crack open food. They also dig up meals with their beaks. Hmm, what do you think they might dig up with their beak to eat? Anybody know? What do you think, Sikendra? What might they dig up to eat? Worms. Maybe. What else did it say they eat? Zion, what did you think they were going to dig up? Um, I would say if they were going to do uh, seeds. Seeds. Look back. Remember what it told us on the last page? It said that they eat fruits, flowers, and insects. So they might eat seeds from a fruit, they eat flowers, and they could be digging up insects if you want some bugs for supper. <laughs> All right, the parrots live in large flocks. The birds squawk and screech to one another. Gabriella, do you know what a flock is? No. Ryan, can you tell her what a flock is? A flock is a bunch of parents sticking together. Yeah, it's a whole group of them. That's right. It's a bunch of them. Great job. The females build nests in tree holes. Chicks hatch from the eggs inside the nest. Look at those cute little babies. A flock works together to watch for monkeys, snakes, and other predators. Fly away! Who remembers what predators means? Anybody know what a predator is? Nobody? A predator is the animals that might want to eat parrots. So maybe monkeys like to eat parrots or snakes like to eat them or their babies, right? So we don't want them to get their babies. So that's the end of the book. So the next thing I want to do is I want to look real quick at this. This page shows us nonfiction text features. Some things you might see are captions where in this book it had little pictures under the big pictures. Usually it's words under the pictures. A glossary helps tell about what the words mean. This book did not have a glossary, but all those words that were in that bold font would usually be in the glossary and then it would tell you what they meant. There's sometimes charts or um, smaller pictures set in. That might be some of the, the graphics, might be those little pictures of where they show what they like to eat and what their pet predators are. We already saw the photographs or illustrations. And there's also sometimes an index. An index is a list that's in alphabetical order that tells you about things that are in the book. Sometimes there's labels. This book didn't have much of these things. Labels are when they point to something in the picture, like when it said beak, it might have had an arrow going to the beak to tell you what it was, or maps. Then it did have special print, like words in bold. And those text features help organize the information so we know what's important. And there's even subtitles. So sometimes there's like the title of the book or the chapter, and then underneath it, there's a smaller one that gives us more details. 
And last of all, there's a table of contents. That's usually in the front and it lists out what um, each section of the book is gonna be about. So I thought that we would take that information that you just learned from the book about parrots and we would start typing up some information so that we can make our own book. So I made a nonfiction text page and I'm gonna put a new document here. I don't know why it says it's, oh, cause I'm in the wrong place. So let's go back. I'm gonna go into our online lessons. Whoops. I can't click the right buttons today. There we go. And then just open up a new page. So here we can type in some things that we learned about parrots. So I'm gonna unmute everybody as long as everybody's participating. And think of some things that you know about parrots in that book. What can you tell us about parrots? Ryan, what can you tell us about parrots? Parrots can... Parrots... Parrots can eat flowers. Ooh, parrots can eat flowers. Very good. What else? Gabriella, what did you learn about parrots? Parrots can eat Do you think they can eat? So they like to eat flowers, they like to eat remember? Um, Kendra thinks she remembers. You want to see if she can help you out? Okay, so can Bugs? Yeah, it said insects. We'll put bugs since that's what you said. They can eat bugs. What else do we know about parrots? <coughs> you got to talk to the same day? What can you tell us about parrots? Get away. Six feet away. Parrots eat fruit. Ooh, parrots eat fruit. Can y'all hear my computer? It doesn't want to type right there. Parrots eat fruit. So you just told me all the things that you learned about what they like to eat. They eat flowers. Parrots can eat bugs and parrots eat fruit. What else do you know about parrots? Anybody have an idea? What else do you know about parrots? Oh, Zion has another one. What else, Zion? Hang on, it won't. You got it? Parrots eat, I, I mean, parrots live in three holes. In tree holes? Yeah, it showed them in a little oh, yeah. hole in that tree, didn't they? What oh, else? Who can give us another one? Gabriella or Sakendra, do you know anything else about parrots? No. No, Gabriella, can you tell us something about parrots? They're colorful. Ooh, it said. It said that parrots are colorful. It did say that. Parrots are 
colorful. Good job. All right, I'm gonna stop there and to, not tomorrow, the next time, Friday, when we get together again, I have another parent book that we'll read and we'll see if it gives us more information. And I have other parent books that have more non text features in them too. So we can look at more, more features that'll have. I think the next one has a map in it and it has some captions. So we can look at those things. So do you guys know what day today is? No. Anybody know what today is? Hey. Diane, do you know what today is? Star Day. Say it, PJ. It's what? Tomato. Ooh, you're so close. Cinco de Mayo. Yeah. Look at the mato. The mato. The mato. The mato. The mato. <laughs> the mato. Because it's, it's <laughs> the 5th of May. Today is Cinco de Mayo. And last night, you were supposed to be able to see a bunch of comets in the sky. Haley's comet was going out, but you know when you had to go out? You had to go out and look at like two o'clock in the morning. I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't get up. I woke up around three, but I just couldn't make myself get out of bed to go look. So that would have been pretty cool to see those streaking across the sky, though. Who's playing the music? Not you, Kendra. <laughs> so, do you guys want to chat with your friends for a few minutes? Yeah, chat. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so you can see each other. Big. Hey, there's Mrs. Roma. <coughs> I didn't know you were there. So, Kendra, come so we can see you. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to see your face. Pretty girl. What kind of talk? You want to talk to your friends? Yeah. You want me to look up the Cinco de Mayo song? Yeah. Yeah. All right. You guys can talk now. Look up the Cinco de Mayo song. I don't hear anybody talking. Who has their maraca? I hear it. I found it. Y'all want to see it? You're going to dance? Ooh, did you, Chauncey, you have yours? Yesterday in the first grade, we made maraca. So here's the song. Oh, cool, Chauncey. Cinco de Mayo today. Clap your hands and shout away. It's Cinco de Mayo today. Clap your hands and shout away. It's Cinco de Mayo today. Clap your hands and shout away. It's Cinco de Mayo today. Clap your hands and shout away. We jump, we jump, we jump, we jump, and dance around the house. We jump, we jump, we jump, we jump, like that. We shake, we shake, we shake. Thank you. 
and then I'm going to show you how to make a cool book using the computer. It's really cool. cool. All right? Thanks. You are so quiet today. It's crazy. <laughs> All right. I love you all. I'll see you on Friday, okay? Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye Gabriella. Bye. 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 Bye, Chauncey and Zion. Bye. -bye.